Yes, a lot of the climate and climate emissions that impact, uh, you know, the, the crisis emanate from G20 uh, countries and also from heavy emitting industries, mm -hmm. right? So, um, you know, and that's why a lot of the advocacy, lobbying and the course to action have focused on G20, asking them to be responsible for decarbonization, for emission reduction, uh, you know, within the economies and within businesses as a whole. What I hear most, both from our global compact members and businesses around the world is that even if companies want to go green or adopt green technology, they're often not able to access financing to be able to do that, or they don't have the knowledge and the information. Selamat siang, sahabat kata-kata. Kembali lagi di program wawancara eksklusif Y20. Saat ini saya sudah bersama dengan asisten sekretaris general dan CEO UNCG, Miss Sanda Jaimbo. So, Miss Sanda, given that our time is very limited, I will start. So, the UNCG stated that the world will only have 10 years left to achieve the SDGs and prevent the rise of the world temperature by 1.5 degrees. At the same time, majority of G20 members have just begun their climate action more intensely in just few, in the past few years. From your capacity, how would you encourage business communities around the world to help the respective government to accelerate their progress? Yeah, I mean, I think it's the UN as a whole who mm -hmm. set the Sustainable Development Goals with a timeline of 2030. We're now in 2022, so next year actually marks the midpoint of the SDGs. So we are taking a stock take or midpoint review of the SDGs. Unfortunately, due to um, catastrophes that we've had, the climate, pan the climate crisis, the COVID pandemic and also conflict, mm -hmm. we have lost progress on the SDGs as a whole. You are specifically about climate. Um, and the fact is, you know, um, you know, science has demonstrated that we need to keep on track with a 1.5 degree trajectory in terms of limiting global warming to be able to achieve, you know, essentially saving the planet for humanity. Yes, a lot of the climate and climate emissions that impact, uh, you know, the, the crisis emanate from G20 uh, countries and also from heavy emitting industries, mm -hmm. right? So, um, you know, and that's why a lot of the advocacy, lobbying and the calls to action have focused on G20, asking them to be responsible for decarbonization, for emission reduction, uh, you know, within the economies and within businesses as a whole. That continues. Admittedly, there isn't enough progress because we are still off track, as well as here at, at the G20, B20, there have been very strong calls to action to really focus on 1.5 degrees, to focus on decarbonization, um, to put in place, you know, the, the right frameworks for the rapid and very urgent decarbonization that we need. Okay, given the financing, the key challenge to the climate action is financing to a lot of small nation and island nation, but to meet the sustainable development, including private, private business and SMEs. So, uh, what advice can you give me for women-led SMEs and young entrepreneurs to, so that so they can do climate action on their own, given that their scale business is not very high? Yeah, I mean, I think for for SMEs, uh, what you know, where where they would fall in the climate debate. I mean, I spoke earlier about decarbonization and heavy emissions. Oftentimes, those are not. SMEs that are heavy mm -hmm. pollutants. SMEs happen to be at the end of the chain, or SMEs are affected by climate, or SMEs have the opportunity to see how they can prepare themselves to, to better able to weather climate shocks when they happen. Um, I think one of the biggest challenges is first, I think, for big businesses to assess mm -hmm. how resilient they can make their own supply chain. If you're a large business and you have SMEs that are your suppliers, are you also working with them to protect them from these shocks around climate? But secondly, and what I hear most, both from our global compact members and businesses around the world, is that even if companies want to go green or adopt green technology, they're often not able to access financing to be able to do that, or they don't have the knowledge and the information. So there's a second tier of climate action, which is really about adaptation and resilience. And how do we work to prepare um, industries better and I'm, I'm sure a lot of women-led industries may fall in that SME piece. I mean, uh, you talk about the supply chain that given the most carbon related to the, uh, for the big business. I mean, uh, if you look at this less, uh, supply chain, 80% of the carbon is uh, from the smallholder farmers that not uh, doing uh, their work to uh, attack the climate change. So 
I think there's something that SMEs can do, uh, particularly about the smallholder farmers. What do you think? No, I fully agree. I mean, climate action needs to be taken at all levels. Mm -hmm. When you say 80%, that's 80% of the aggregate. Yes, but each yes, specific yes. business probably emits a small amount. So the question is, for any company with a massive supply chain around the world, what do you put in place to be able to manage those emissions? So I think you need to look at it at the individual level, but also at the aggregate. Okay. And that's how company then ends up being a heavy emitter uh, because of what happens at the aggregate level. Plus, you attend COP27 in Egypt, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the African Business Leader Coalition made their statement about climate action. And yesterday, the B20 uh, produced actionable recommendation to the government. In your view, how do you see that ambition can help preventing the 2030 prediction of the rise of global temperature above 1.5 degree? And which do you think that more aggressive, in COP or in B20? You know, I, do, I think processes feed into each other. I don't think you should <laughs> compare one to the other. I mean, COP is the the global climate co change conference that is grounded in the climate conventions. B20 is bringing businesses together around the G20 initiatives. But the thing is one, right? Environmental, climate action, and such. Yeah, they're, such. they're one, but I wouldn't pit one against the other. What okay. we need right now to avert the climate crisis is concerted effort at all levels. A lot of delegates who are at COP are here at B20. Mm. A lot of government heads of state who are at COP are also here. The question is, how do you continue to mobilize your, your constituency, your advocates, your financing uh, to be able to work towards climate action? It doesn't mean that you know, they compete against each other. They should collaborate and just make sure the same key message of the past through, keep 1.5 degrees alive. It was a rallying call in COP, will continue to be a rallying call in G20 and B20. Okay, that's all for me today. Baiklah. Uh, begitu saja sahabat kata data wawancara saya dengan Sanda. Thank you Sanda for your time. Thank you.